Hey, fourth grade families and students, it's Mr. Panza. It's time to check in on another quick review for a social studies assessment coming up tomorrow. We just finished up our study on Jamestown and Roanoke, the Pilgrims and the Puritans, and some of the first earliest settlements of English individuals in the North American continent. So we wanted to go over some questions and just see how much we actually know about what we just studied. This is a written agreement that gives someone the right to establish a colony. Well, that's a charter. I mentioned to the students that we hear a lot specifically about charters still in today's age. However, typically it could be for something other than setting up a colony. Instead, you would see it for things like setting up schools. Well, this was actual piece of paper that gave the different settlers an opportunity to set up and establish a colony. The Virginia Company was selling a lot of investments to others which offered part ownership of their business or their earnings. They did this because they needed additional money and the offerings that they were uh, giving to people or these investments are known as stock. Same as the type of stock that we see on the New York Stock Exchange as I was discussing with the students over the last couple of weeks. The best example of this type of product is tobacco, or at least we read about that a lot in our book. It was one of the more relevant types of these as we were reading in our stories, and it was strictly sold for profit or to make money. That's a cash crop. There were many different cash crops, and there still are today, but tobacco was one of the biggest ones for the newest settlers to the North American continent. In fact, tobacco was such a huge cash crop, it seemed to be part of one of the earliest successes for the settlers. In agreement of rules, the Pilgrims established one of these when they came over on the Mayflower. It's an agreement of rules that they had to come up with because the Mayflower was pushed off, of course, by some pretty big storms. They were actually headed towards Virginia because the Virginia Company were the ones that offered them land. Instead, they get pushed off course. They end up further northeast, and they had to come up with their own rules, so they called it a compact. It was called the Mayflower Compact, which agreed upon different rules for each of them to follow as they got there. Native American who taught the Pilgrims how to plant crops, his name was Squanto. There's only one Native American in your choice box there, so kind of limits your responses, but Squanto was the only real major Native American that we had studied who was really willing to help the different settlers. The only other person that we talked about that was also willing to help the settlers was Pocahontas, and the person that she married that briefly stopped the fighting between the Powhatan Native Americans and the Jamestown settlers, as I pause. I pause for that brief announcement. Thank you for understanding. Is John Rolfe. He's the one that married Pocahontas. This is an individual who stated to the Jamestown colonists that if they didn't work, then they wouldn't eat. That's the other John. His name is John Smith. The only one we haven't mentioned here is John Winthrop. But John Smith is the one that seemed to understand that these Jamestown colonists were not willing to work. And he decided, well, if you're not willing to work, then you're really not going to eat, which happened. And unfortunately, a lot of the settlers wound up dying because of it. The mystery about the Roanoke Colony in North Carolina was the fact that all of the people disappeared. The only thing left was the fact that there was one word left on a tree. But when uh, the m individual from England came back with all sorts of different goods and supplies, there was nobody there to share them with. He had no idea where they went. Why were the Powhatan Indians upset with the Jamestown settlers? Really, were there were a lot of reasons, but they were fighting over land. They were not only fighting the settlers for land, but the settlers were forcing them off of the land, and then the settlers also would refuse to fight for or with the Native Americans against other Native American tribes for this land. So there's a variety of different reasons, but really it was a fight over these land claims. Why did the pilgrims come to North America? For religious freedom. Specifically, you notice in the choice box when they wanted to break free from the Church of England, but they wanted that religious freedom so they could practice their faith. And what was interesting about that was they still wanted to separate themselves from all other beliefs as well. Why did the Puritans mean, or what did they mean when they said, we shall be a city upon a hill? It means they wanted to live as an example for the other people, that people could look up to them. And why did the Puritans have more success farming than, say, the Pilgrims? It's because they landed in spring. The Pilgrims landed in late fall, and eventually it turned into winter, which was an awful time for the growing season. So I know we just kind of blazed through these questions, but again, use them, study them, and try and answer them to be prepared for tomorrow. Thanks. Have a great night.